Howdy folks, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. So, how about those new Italian destroyers? Now, these are as new to me as they are to you, since leaving the Community Contributor Program, I obviously haven't had early access to any new ship lines, and on paper, these Italian destroyers do not look very good. However, unlike the very recently announced proposed introduction of support aircraft carriers into the game at tiers 6, 8 and 10 that drop stun bombs, that disable the use of your consumables, making it, for example, impossible for you to put out fires, because World of Warships hasn't learned anything from the detested stun mechanic used by artillery in World of Tanks, but if you were to look more closely at these new Italian destroyers, they don't actually suck as badly as it might first appear that they do just from looking at their stats on the World of Warships wiki page. There's more than a hint of the Paolo Emilio about these things. So for those of you who don't know what that is, because there's a surprising amount of you watching these videos who don't actually play World of Warships, the Paolo Emilio, or as it's more affectionately known, the Yolo Emilio, or the Paolo Emiliolo, is a tier 9 Italian destroyer that looks absolutely terrible on paper, thanks to, amongst other things, the horrendously long reload on its guns. Remember, it's a destroyer and it has a 10.7 second base reload. It also has ludicrously bad 9km surface concealment and torpedoes that only have a 6km range. So, all of the ingredients for an absolutely terrible destroyer on paper, and yet in practice, there isn't a lot in World of Warships that's more fun, and if you do it right, more effective, than popping the Paolo Emilio's high-speed smoke generator yelling Choo-choo, motherfucker! <laughs> and just making a beeline straight towards the nearest enemy battleship, and unloading 12 torpedoes into an at point-blank range. And there's some of that about these regular Tech Tree Italian destroyers as well, as we're going to showcase today with... Um, and again, great name by the way, DD Mafia Associate Member here, using the Italian Tier 6 destroyer, the Aviere. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. If I'm wrong, I do apologise, Italy. But we're using this as an example. So it's not quite as extreme as the Paolo Emilio, but it does share a lot of the same features. First, Mafioso here is going to get an opportunity, probably a little earlier than he'd liked, to demonstrate both the terrible guns and the terrible torpedoes, as he gets spotted by a German destroyer. What's so bad about these guns? Well, the reload isn't terrible, but it's not great. 6.5 seconds. What is bad about the guns, though, is the range. Even fully upgraded, they only have a 6.9 kilometer range. They're actually shorter range than the torpedoes, but that doesn't mean the torpedoes are any good, because while it can put a fair amount of them in the water, they don't do a huge amount of damage, and they are incredibly slow, with a speed of 56 knots. The thing about these guns, though, is that while they are slow firing, it does get five of them, and with the semi-armor piercing shells, they hit kind of hard. Not something that you can say about German destroyer high explosive, which I always thought was ironic about German destroyers, because on the one hand they get the German quarter calibre penetration buff for high explosive shells, so their HE shells do have very good penetration. But the shells themselves suck. <laughs> they just can't damage anything. Of course the German destroyer's armour piercing shells are way better, but they don't get the improved penetration angles like British destroyer armour piercing shells, so if the target is angled, the armor-piercing shells aren't really going to do a lot of damage either. The good thing, however, and this is something that people do often overlook, but the good thing about having such criminally bad range on your main battery guns on this ship, as was illustrated when Mafioso took out that German Geider, he was instantly unspotted, because with 69 kilometer range on your guns, you were never going to be spotted by anything more than 69 kilometers away. You know, it's not like you're cruising around in your Shimakaze enjoying the benefits of your 5.5km stealth and then you blunder into somebody, get spotted, open fire and suddenly your detection range blooms to 11.4km or whatever the range of the Shimakaze's guns are. It's only ever going to be as bad as 6.9km in the aviary because that's how far the guns fire. So even if, worst case scenario, you sink the ship that's spotting you, but there is another ship within 6.9 kilometers, you don't have to run very far 
to get out of spotting range. Particularly since this is also a very, very fast ship with a base speed of 38 knots. That's incredibly fast for a tier 6 destroyer, and when it needs to, it can go a lot faster than that, because it has a special engine boost consumable. Technically it isn't an engine boost consumable, because with engine boost you only get an 8% buff to your engine power. This bad boy gets the emergency engine power consumable instead, with 6 charges by default. And this thing doesn't give you no 8% speed buff, it gives you a 25% speed buff, although it doesn't last as long, only 50 seconds. But you can cover a lot of distance in 50 seconds when you're screaming along in this bad boy at just a hair under 50 knots. At tier 6. Oh, and then to cap it all off, it does have your traditional Italian exhaust smoke generator, which is just like a regular smoke generator, except you can use it at full speed. And because it's a destroyer and not a cruiser, it doesn't suffer from that awful smoke firing penalty that the cruisers have. Which in practice basically means that the Italian cruisers and the battleships that get the exhaust smoke generator as well can only really use it defensively in order to cross an open stretch of water without being seen or disengage from combat and get the hell out of there. But because this is a destroyer with a very lenient smoke firing penalty you can actually use it aggressively charging an enemy down with all guns blazing in a way that would just get you spotted, completely negate the effect of the smoke, and probably killed if you tried to do it in anything that wasn't an Italian destroyer. Quick word about these torpedoes by the way, because they are slow. I mean they're not the slowest torpedoes in the game, but they're slow. Even slow torpedoes however can be used to punish players who do not understand that smoke screens are torpedo magnets. And sure enough, one torpedo hit. Now that's a light cruiser, because there's only one destroyer per team, and, well, Mafioso sank the enemy destroyer a couple of minutes ago. Now if you were the light cruiser hiding inside that smoke screen and you just got torpedoed, would you A, charge straight out of the smoke screen so you could be one-shotted, or B, reason to yourself, well I've just been torpedoed once, I'm probably not going to get torpedoed again for at least the next minute, and use that time to reposition so that you're no longer inside the smoke screen that's sucking in torpedoes. If you pick the second option, then congratulations on being able to think and breathe at the same time. Oh, and by the way, just in case you haven't been keeping score, DD Mafia associate member is still the only person on his team who has sank anything. And he's flipped two of the caps in the process as well. I don't know what the rest of his team are doing, but it's not a lot. Remember, 6.9 kilometer maximum possible ever surface detection range. So he has options here, even though, yeah, his emergency engine power is on cooldown, but he does still have options. At the moment he's just, well, basically using a surprisingly responsive throttle to juke and dodge enemy shots. But there's option number one. Assuming the emergency engine power consumable is on cooldown, and it is, you can always use the exhaust smoke generator, and that will give you 50 seconds of concealment while still being able to fight. Because you're in a destroyer, and not a cruiser or a battleship, and so you get a very, very generous smoke firing penalty. Doesn't last long, of course, only 50 seconds, but you do get six charges, and 50 seconds is more than enough time for you to get out of spotting range, especially when you can do 38 knots without the emergency engine power and nearly 50 knots with it. So these new Italian destroyers, they do very much appear to be brawling destroyers. They've got all of the tools necessary to make it work, just like the Paolo Emilio at tier 9. They're fast. They have an exhaust smoke generator that allows them to go at full speed while staying stealthed up. You can use the torpedoes at range, but it's a bit of a lottery. I mean, if that York turns to the right, and he is, all of those torpedoes are going to miss. Unless somebody was to troll him into turning to the left in order to get his guns firing at that pesky Italian destroyer that just popped up. Cruiser captains, battleship captains, be wary. <laughs> of people that pull this kind of gag and instantly undetected because the York was the only thing within 6.9 kilometers. So it didn't matter that he was firing his guns. He was doing it just to troll the York into turning into the direction that he wanted him to. And oh look, somebody else on the team actually managed to sink something. 
Don't worry, I'm sure it was an accident. They won't do that again in a hurry. Mafia here is still very much carrying his team. And he's not top tier, by the way. This is a tier 7 battle. I mean, he's not bottom tier either, but he's not top tier. And he's still responsible for 75% of his team's kills and both of the caps. And now he's going to have to defend one of those caps. Against the flint? Now this is ballsy, because flints are basically there to kill destroyers. But this one doesn't seem to be interested in shooting at him. And he's popping his own smoke, but going way too fast to stay hidden in it. I mean, he's far enough away from anybody spotting him to not be affected by the smoke firing penalty. He's just, well, basically outrunning his own smoke screen. So that was a complete waste of a consumable. And once again, because the flint was the only thing in gun range, once the flint died, he is, again, undetected. And he's now responsible not just for both of his team's caps, but also one cap defence, and now 80% of his team's kills. And so, of course, his team celebrates by immediately losing another battleship, converting a nearly 200-point lead into a roughly 150-point lead. His team, thanks to his efforts, do still have the 2-1 to one cap advantage, so despite the fact that they are losing ships faster than the enemy team, they're also gaining points faster than the enemy team. Oh, somebody else did just sink another enemy ship. Hang on a second, where did those torpedoes come from? Were those the Flint's torpedoes? I mean, the Flint's... it gets Benson torpedoes, which have the range, but they're kind of slow. So, yeah, I guess if the Flint had launched torpedoes, we would be seeing them around about now, but it has two quad launchers, one on each side. Why only two torpedoes? That doesn't make any sense. There's nothing left alive on the enemy team that has a twin torpedo launcher. Unless the Flint somehow managed to lose a couple of torpedoes in the wreck of something? Maybe the York was taking its sweet time sinking? I, I don't know. Bit of a mystery. Oh, and these team have just lost another two ships. That smoke screen over there, by the way, that's the Flint's smoke screen. The Flint does get an excellent smoke. It's an American smoke. It lasts forever and it covers a huge area. And he completely wasted it. Now might be a good time to talk about the ammunition. Because you've probably already noticed, or if you haven't, I'm happy to point it out. This ship does not get armor-piercing ammunition. Semi-armor-piercing and high-explosive only. Now that's not really such an issue for destroyers. Unless you're playing German destroyers, which really should routinely try to be make the most possible use out of their armor-piercing shells as they possibly can because of the mediocre performance of their high-explosive shells. So, the Aviere not having access to armor-piercing shells isn't really that much of an issue. But the semi-armor-piercing ammunition, while it's not bad, and works just as well, if not better than the high-explosive shells do against other destroyers, definitely light cruisers, probably also heavy cruisers, just not really battleships. Because these are just destroyer-caliber guns, 120mm. They're not 152mm light cruiser guns firing SAP, or 203mm heavy cruiser guns firing SAP. And they don't really work against battleships. They're not the one-size-fits-all solution that, well, in this battle at least, DD Mafia seems to think they were going to be. And that's probably because he's been using semi armor piercing shells in Italian cruisers and battleships, where they do work extremely well against all kinds of targets. And this was probably the moment when he realised that he might actually have to switch to the high explosive shells every now and then. Which honestly would have done way, way better against a heavily armoured target like a battleship. Whoa, where did that Fusau's health go? He was on full health a minute ago when we turned around and looked in that direction. Why is nobody finishing him off? Team, that target, finish it off before it heals up. I suspect it was the Nagato, just up to the north, who reduced that Fuso down to that low health because, well, looking at the map, I don't really see anybody else in shooting range with the firepower that could have done that in such a short period of time. But why isn't he finishing him? It's been way more than 30 seconds. His guns should have reloaded by now. Unless the Nagato is on low health and he's trying to disengage so he doesn't get bitch slapped in return by the Koenig over there. Yep, that Fuso is definitely healing up. What a wasted opportunity. DD Maffi is clearly thinking about going for it and finishing him off, and he is a tempting opportunity target, but... Yeah, maintaining this points lead by keeping the enemy ships out of the cap is probably the smartest thing to do. Particularly since, well, he may be able to get a kill here. 
As you can see, the semi-armor piercing works perfectly well against cruisers, just not really battleships. Oh, you don't want to be turning to get broadside like that, Sunshine. They might not be armor-piercing shells, but these things are still entirely capable of killing you. I think it might be time to use that high-speed smoke again. Yep, there it is. Oh, not a kill. Somebody needs to spot. Although, his two surviving teammates have other things to think about. Oh, there he is. No problem. Gotcha. There's the Kraken Unleashed. I can't help but picture Clint Eastwood in Gran Turismo with his M1 rifle shouting, Get off my lawn! Anytime an enemy ship comes near that central cap circle. <laughs> oh! The Fuso! Nice big flat broadside as well. Although he is watching this smoke screen, he knows that DD Mafia is here. Oh, actually, you know what? I take it back about the semi armor piercing. When a battleship's giving you a nice flat broadside like that, it can work. Although, it does seem to be kind of inconsistent. He's hedging his bets here. Launching the torpedoes as well, just in case. Because while the Fuso may not have the most accurate guns in the world, it does have a lot of them. And he could die here. I'm always bemused that why battleship captains do that with their depth charge airstrikes against destroyers. I mean, I get it. If you think there might be a destroyer there and you think he might not have learned to turn his AA guns off, then yeah, sure. Oh, hang on a second. Is he going to actually get him with one of these torpedoes? Is he? Maybe? Yes. <laughs> Kill number six. And again, because the Fuso was only thing inside his gun range, second he sank the Fuso, he's unspotted. But yeah, back to the whole airstrike depth charge thing because it's not going to spot anything at the very best all it's going to do is make an unspotted destroyer fire its anti-aircraft guns which will give you a rough idea of where that destroyer is or confirm that there is in fact a destroyer over there but DD Mafia was spotted anyway the Fuso was shooting at him he could see him he knew exactly where he was so what was the point of the aircraft just to give him something to do while he waited for his guns to reload. <laughs> That's as good an explanation as any. Because you can't spot anything with those strike aircraft. They, they don't do that. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Right, well, the team have just lost the Nagato. That just leaves... Well, probably about to lose the Bayern as well. And he wasn't able to take anyone with him. So, our team depends upon you. But, you know, well, DD Mafia should be used to that by now. The team's pretty much been dependent on him since the battle started. He's responsible for six of the nine enemy casualties. He's taken two of the cap circles and defended this central cap on multiple occasions. He's going to have to give it up now, though, because he's got no health left and he cannot afford to get spotted and shot at. Otherwise, he will throw this game. Which means... I'm sure he'd love to defend that central cap again, but he's just going to have to give it up. But that's fine, because there's less than two minutes of this match remaining. He is ahead on points, and while the enemy team, even if they can't catch and kill him, which will be difficult because he's in a very, very fast destroyer, doing nearly 50 knots, and they're all in slow-ass battleships, so they're never going to catch him, unless he wants to be caught. So they can have that central cap. He'll take this one. <laughs> <laughs> he's far enough ahead on points with about a minute and a half remaining that as long as he doesn't die he'll still be far enough ahead on points by the time the match timer expires that he'll just win on points there's nobody on the enemy team close enough to the cap circle up north at Charlie to flip that before the match ends which means he's still going to have a two cap point lead so, as long as he doesn't do anything incredibly stupid and try to win any harder than he is going to, it's difficult to see how he could lose. Why are you slowing down? Mafia, what are you doing? Mafia, we've talked about this. <laughs> Take the cap circle and hide. You've got this. There are seconds left in this match. What are you doing? Don't do it. Don't do it. Oh my god, you did it. Use the... No, you use the smoke and then you shoot. Because <laughs> he saw you for a fraction of a second. And he had the guns pointing... Oh, that was way too close. 
and completely unnecessary. Honestly, he could blind fire now and kill you. I mean, sure, there isn't enough time left in this battle for the Piotr Veliki to reload those front turrets. But he has other turrets. <laughs> Man, you like living dangerously, don't you? I mean, okay, he's won. But that could have gone horribly, horribly wrong right at the last second. That was... Yeah, don't do that at home, kids. Take the win. Don't risk it. But, you know, aside from that sudden rush of shit to the brain right in the last couple of seconds of the match, I can't really fault Didi Mafia's performance. That was a pretty textbook example of how to get the most out of these new Italian destroyers. So, congratulations. I mean, he definitely deserved the win, even if he did try to throw it away in the last 30 seconds. But a win's a win, and he definitely deserved that one. Hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. I hope it's given you some idea about what to expect from these new Italian destroyers. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.